Welcome to Campfire Football. I'm Sebastian North. It's Friday, March 26th. Hope everyone's enjoying the international break. I currently am. I don't really consider it a break from football. It's just a totally different thing. There's so many different things going on right now. Uh, Under-21 European Championships. There's um, World Cup qualifying all over the place. So, you know, there's good stuff to see. And strangely enough, the news cycle seems to have completely dried up for a lot of the sort of main broadcasters of football. They are struggling so bad to come up with anything to talk about, which I think is really interesting because the football world has such a deep well of stories and interesting things going on. Even there, if, even if they're in obscure places, some stories and a lot of them are just good enough that anyone will pay attention, even if it's just for a few minutes. And it's good because it can generate a little bit of interest and awareness in other places in the world where football is played. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the big networks are convinced that if we aren't talking about the big clubs, the big players, fans will just immediately tune out because they won't know who you're talking about. I think they're wrong. They don't realize that football is interesting to people. And if the story is something they can relate to, well, it'll sell, it'll work, and it'll get some traction. Unfortunately, that's we're not seeing any kind of creativity from really much of anybody to try and find something to report on when maybe the news cycle slows down a little bit, right? You get those three days where the national teams are together in training and there's no matches going on anywhere, and everyone's kind of like, oh, what do we say? On ESPN FC, they did a segment where they had someone on the – one of their analysts – create a list of the top 10 strikers in the world right now in order the ranking them from best to last and then they argued about the order for like 15 minutes and we all know this is just a useless conversation right like do you have Benzema over Holland and why and they argue about all this and it's like it's not even a thing there's not even a transfer that's coming up that where someone's deciding this and it's in the it, All of it is just make-believe talk. And it's because they think no one's going to care if it's not about the biggest, biggest heavy-hitting names and topics in the game. Which is sad because I think football broadcasting does have a little bit more of a responsibility to not just say what's going on, what the big stories are that are happening on the pitch – or talking about transfers or talking about rumors, but actually every now and again, when you have enough space and time in the schedule, bring something to people's attention that's really interesting and that also can be far more beneficial as a story in the long run for everybody, not just in terms of what they learn from football, but life. And so that's why I wanted to do this episode 46. It's called What the Buck Happened, the Football Index Story. So, for those of you who have no idea what happened, Football Index, uh, goodness, it's basically a situation where a gambling company basically had a Ponzi scheme and a lot of people lost a lot of money. Now, that sounds like an incredibly overly simplistic way to describe it, which it is, so let me get into it. So about two weeks ago, this story broke, began to emerge, and... I had to wait to see more of the details that would come out because I knew that there would be a fallout and see if anything changed or or evolved out of it or blew up, really. So I wanted to see what happened. And basically, it's a story of football, but only in the tiniest way. This is really more about money, gambling, investing, Ponzi schemes, fortunes lost, lives destroyed, right? And... The primary thing, a problem in critical thinking and responsibility. Unfortunately, that's kind of the last thing that happens in all this. So, it's pretty deep, I know, but I'll start where we have to, the beginning. So, what is Football Index? Football Index is a company that was launched in 2015, and it was just a platform, an online platform, where users were called investors, and they could buy shares in players, basically, who real players, and hope to watch the players grow in value, and then they could make dividends from the sales of those shares uh, once they reached a higher price. 
You could trade between other users and you could do it as much money. You could put as much money as you wanted into your portfolio to build it and grow. Now, if all of that sounds like investing, that's reasonable. You would think, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I heard the terms investors. I heard shares. I heard dividends. I heard portfolio. Sounds like investment to me. Well, here's the thing. Football Index was actually licensed by the Gambling Commission. That's where their entire license for existence came from, which Gambling Commission oversees betting companies. They were not licensed under a financial conduct authority of any kind, which those are the kinds of things that oversee investment products. Big, big difference. This is the first mistake I think a lot of people made was not to figure out, not to know, and basically just overlook this major detail because it would be the big difference between your money actually being safe and your money being in high volatility. So it worked though in the beginning. It was doing really, really well. Users were joining pretty quickly. They were succeeding. You know, they were making pretty good money. You go ahead and you get Jaden Sancho at, you know, some like 30 pence per share. And two years later, he's, you know, on the radar of all the biggest clubs in the world and his value is enormous. And you can sell those shares to other people and make a bunch of money. That's essentially what was going on. And they were doing well. They I mean they advertised pitch side at games. They really got their name out there. They they got their names on pro teams kits, like right on right on the front as sponsors. They even got commentators and celebrities to do commercials and and to talk about it. And they were up to over five hundred thousand users in just a couple of years. It was a re really really amazing growth. And they're just raking it in. And some people who were doing it who had started with maybe like 100 pounds were able to grow it to thousands in not an enormous amount of time. And that was not uncommon. So when you start to see a high level of pretty gigantic success in making fast money, in my opinion, you should be a little bit cautious and concerned. But because it was working, it was growing. And that's exactly what the company needed, right? Um, it was good for football index that everything was what, that people were actually bringing more money and investing into it. And like I said, it was necessary. Now, why did they desperately need people to be bringing money in and injecting more cash and seeing why the product was something that they wanted to be a part of? Very simple. Another term, liabilities. Now, if you don't know what liabilities are, it's very simple. It's it's how much you are still having to pay for someone's investment that grew, right? So the liabilities at Football Index, they stood to pay their clients out over a million pounds a month, um, an amount that they would definitely have struggled to come up with should all of a sudden a bunch of the users say, I'm done, I want to cash out, I want all my money from, from my portfolio. If that happened in mass, they were screwed. They were in big, big trouble. They didn't have the capital as a company to be able to just pay people out. The only way that they could actually get that kind of sustainability, aside from some kind of massive investment from an outside firm, was new users and more new users. This is where, to me, it starts to sound like a pyramid scheme because the, the vast majority of pyramid and Ponzi schemes, the way they work is there's not really that much money in it. There's not much money at all in it. What you're doing is you're selling this idea to people and you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily pay them, but they themselves are growing all this money. I mean, there's, there's so many stories of Ponzi schemes. If you don't really know, just go ahead and look into them. I don't want to spend too much time explaining them because I want to stick to this football index story specifically, but as some users actually started to pull money from their actual investment accounts, like their investment bank that is run by a financial advisor, they were pulling money out of that and just sinking it into their football index portfolio. Now, that helped the company, but for these people, their overall risk and liabilities just grew and grew and grew. And with every single purchase that was made on the site, the, the, the shares also expanded. So, the whole thing was just ballooning and getting bigger. And the question is, when's it going to pop? Well, they really went for it to try and legitimize themselves. I think to try and find a way to make enough money that, that, that this would never be an issue. In 2020, they looked to make some changes. Um, I think 
I think they were maybe realizing how precarious of a position they were in. I'm not really sure. But apparently one thing they did was they pa- they partnered with NASDAQ. Uh, and the whole deal was to power up their order books, their order book system. I'm assuming so that they could get, so that they could do more of trade volume, so that they could do trades quicker. And basically hope to maybe legitimize themselves as a real investment company. I don't really know. That's the, maybe not. Um, I really doubt they would have actually wanted oversight from a real financial entity instead of being part of the gambling commission where they could get away with a lot. So basically, after all, that's it. That's it. it was just a gambling license. And it just doesn't appear that very many users were aware of that, right? They they maybe kind of knew it, but they didn't really think about it. So two more things that ended up happening that's really, really started to draw attention to them and, and I think made some people want to investigate what was actually going on. Number one, they had an instant cash out option where you could just be charged, I think, 2% or something like that for just pulling everything out. But that option, Football Index realized, would be a real problem, as I mentioned before. And so they got rid of it last March and uh, just totally removed the option. And there were some people who were like, well, that's kind of weird. It showed that they were worried about their liabilities. Number two, and this is a clearer sign, was they slashed the dividend payout that you could get from a maximum of 33 pence per, uh, per sale to just six per share. I mean, that is a huge drop. And what happened is there's some people whose portfolios dipped in value by 50 up to 90%. I mean, it's an enormous amount of money for people who had actually been putting in thousands and thousands and thousands of real pounds into this. And it was all started to disappear. Uh, well, not necessarily disappear, but the value of their account shrunk so much. And sometimes to the point where they were suffering real losses. So people started to pull their money out more and more. And then eventually this just cascaded. And just a few weeks ago, just a couple of weeks ago, on March 11th, the company went into administration, their license was suspended, and Bet Index, who was the parent company, uh, had to suspend all trading on the platform and go into administration. Wham. So a report was sent out to the Gambling Commission on what Football Index had really been doing. And they said that <laughs> basically they had been clearly, that these were clearly deliberate um, imitations of an investment product. And it led tens of thousands of users to basically being misled into believing that this was investing and not gambling. And the terminology that they were using certainly helped to convince people, no doubt. But at the same time, it seems a little weird to me to say people were misled. Yes, they were. But at the same time, you know, football index, were they actually trying to say that this is what they were? Well, they said it's not a gam- it, that they are a gambling platform and that they never claim to be a savings product. All right, so who is right in all this? I mean, Football Index was clearly licensed by a gambling commission, right? But they were pretty clear um, that, well, you know, between themselves that they weren't. The problem is that they were very clever at the same time about the terminology they used. And, you know, I... I think it's it's not much different than selling heroin and just calling it Oxycontin. That's, that's sort of what they were doing. The fallout from this is amazing. 5,700 people lawyered up in like two days to sue Football Index for their own losses, for the losses that they have. I mean, and these lawyers, solicitors, as they're called in the UK, they're investigating, and I quote this, potential claims against individual directors personally, including misrepresentation, fraudulent misrepresentation, civil fraud, Unlawful means, conspiracy, and deceit. Woo! That's a damning and a pretty serious stack of allegations. That's a laundry list you do not want to have. So, like I said, Football Index claims, well, we're a gambling company. We never claim to be anything else. So, all of that stuff is just your opinion, man, (laughs) I guess. So, look, first, I think one of the biggest problems here is that People were not necessarily thinking about this critically enough. Like when I first heard about Football Index, my my opinion was like, I just was like, I don't understand. Is this basically just like fantasy football, like the EPL fantasy football I do, but with real money and it's not exactly like that because 
it's it doesn't start over every season. It's not you don't get points based on matches. You just get the value of something. It's a, you know the players are basically stocks. But I'm not sure how many people really thought about that this that why people thought this was investing and not gambling because the the real difference is that you're not investing in the players. You're just investing in football index. I don't think a lot of people really realize that. So. You know, do users even want to invest in players? Like, is that something they really want to do? And if the players are like, are the players actually seeing and feeling some kind of effect and positive outcome from all of these shares that are being sold? Uh, uh, you know, that have to do with them? No, no. Players were not receiving anything from this. And if you do want to invest in a player, uh, you can, right? You can invest in players like you can in any business. Like, okay, I had Brendan Griffiths on here the other day. Um, you know, he talked about one of the in on his pod. He talks about the fact that trying to at least make money while you're trying to grow your dream of being a pro is really important because you do have to fund yourself, right? And he's trying to become a professional. He's in Denmark. He's going to try and find some side work so that he can continue to pay rent and things like that. I mean, saving up a bunch of money and going somewhere is not that easy, right? So if you want to invest in a player. Help them with the visa. Help them with housing. Give them money. I mean, that's how you invest in people. Putting money into uh, some other company and saying, I hope that they do well. If they do, you owe me money. That's gambling. <laughs> like, so, look, this is where the terms, they needed to be defined. They need to be defined for people. And I know it sounds like probably pretty rudimentary, but you can avoid a lot of problems and scams by actually just simply knowing what terminology is, why people use certain words, and what words even just mean. So look, investing is the act or process of expending a resource and laying out capital in an enterprise with the expectation of profit and growth, okay? Gambling is playing for stakes in a type of, in the hope of winning a prize, and it's all characterized by winning or losing, and it's based on skill and luck. That's not investing, right? Now, about their model, because I think this is really, really important. It sounds like fantasy football. Um, and for some reason, like a, like a soccer stock market. Now, when you hear that, why, why does it not, you know, trigger something in you? Like, we all know the stock market is not a real reflection of every. I mean, like, one of the things I love to, that people say is the stock market is basically just a graph of rich people's feelings. That's one thing we say in the United States because it's kind of true. It the stock market was booming when the entire rest of the economy was collapsing in in April of 2020. Why? Well, you know, market forces are a little different than the real economy. And I think this was a clear example, right? People are making boatloads of money from something and they don't really know where it's coming from. And that is always got to be your number one point of concern. Look, I know it's it's nice to get money and to get easy and free money, but if you are not paying attention where it's coming from, if you simply don't care, you might lose everything you've invested. It's just exactly what happened here. There's some people who lost everything. I mean, families lost entire fortunes, right? Daddy O decided, you know, I'm 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 tired of dealing with Joe Walsh, my financial advisor at Morgan Stanley or whatever, and I'm taking this money, all of it out. He's not like he's not earning enough like he's not earning his keep I can do this for free myself and make three times the money on football index and then they lost it all now do I feel bad for these people absolutely absolutely I don't wish this on anybody and I don't really want to dance on the fact that people got themselves screwed over but that's why I want to mention it again I'm not trolling these people but I have to say this is the key point if you don't want to take responsibility for these actions and you decide I'm lawyering up and I just want to get all my money back, what lesson are you learning for the next time? Scamming is a huge, huge thing now. I get so many phone calls and voicemails that I listen to. And I'm like, this person's telling me that there's like a warrant out for my arrest in some other state because I've got a credit issue. Like, I know that that's a scam, right? But if you can get someone scared or if you can get someone excited you can get someone to believe something pretty quickly. The sad thing is there is still a lot of folks out there who would like for football index to still be around and stay. 
I have no problem with that. If you're cool with knowing that it's gambling, awesome. But I think some of these people just believe that if there was just a change of management, that it would actually be perfectly fine. No, the problem was the terminology from the beginning, the way that they tried to hoodwink people into thinking that it was an investment product and a savings product. And having the whole thing just be a Ponzi scheme from the beginning, right? Could better management make this work? Yes, you would need an enormous amount of capital invested in the company so that they can pay those liabilities, so that they can pay the dividends to people if they want to cash out. And could it happen? Absolutely. Just know that if it's licensed under the gambling commission and know if it's licensed as some kind of savings product. That's the that's the biggest point to start from in terms of not getting caught and and uh, and scammed. And then the other thing is personal responsibility, right? You need to critically think and then you need to have personal responsibility where if you do make this move, you know that this is on you and you're taking a punt and you're trying and that's okay. But if it doesn't work, you have to learn your lesson. And my concern here is this story is not being talked about enough in a world where gambling is blowing up, sports gambling is, is increasing. I'm, I'm sure if you're in the UK, you're kind of like, what, what do you mean? In the United States, just over the last year, they passed laws to open up gambling. And it's incredible the amount of sports betting that it, sports gambling specifically. It's incredible the amount of it that's going on, the commercials you see. It's a huge growing industry. And so if you don't think that a, a football index can just, I mean, we can have a football index in the United States. It can be based on a different sport. And the way people are about fantasy NFL in this country, I mean, I can only imagine football index would be huge here. Huge. Well, how are people going to deal with it? Right? Is a company going to come in and be like, invest in Tom Brady, even though he's retiring maybe tomorrow? You know, I, who knows? It's, it's, it's a really interesting thing. I just wanted to bring this up because in a dry news cycle, as most people think it is right now, this is a story that deserved enormous amounts of attention. If you're in the UK, you definitely heard about it. If you're in the US, you might not have. And that's pretty sad. So if you heard it first from here and first from me, I'm honored. If, uh, if this is a story that you followed before and you think I covered it horribly, I apologize. If you learned something from this, that's exactly the point. That was the goal. All right, everybody, uh, I will continue. I'll be back with uh, an episode on women's football and a couple little interesting things about it because, once again, there's a lot of people saying that this isn't really going anywhere, that it's not worth investing in, and you're dead wrong. So we're going to cover that a little bit in the next couple days. Everybody, thanks so much. Enjoy your weekend. I hope to have more content for you as we go the next few days. This is Campfire Football. Have a great night.